All right, welcome back. This is Mr. Tipton, and today begins our study of integers. Today's video will help us on uh, will help us prepare for Unit One, Quiz One, Sections A and B. By the end of the video, we need to be able to identify the additive inverse of a given integer. We need to be able to show that an integer and its opposite will always have a sum of zero. And we need to be able to describe real-world situations where opposite quantities have a sum of zero. All right, so let's dive right in. And first, let's talk about what an integer is. All right, integers are the set of whole numbers and their opposites. Whole numbers and their opposites. The opposite of short is tall. The opposite of hot is cold. The opposite of three is negative three. Okay, three and negative three are opposites. All right, what, uh, what do you think the opposite of negative four is? Yeah, four, very good. Um, how about the opposite of one? Negative one, very good, you're so smart. Okay. Whole numbers and their opposites. If we added opposites, like let's start with those threes. If we did a three plus a negative three, we'd end up with zero. If we did negative four plus four, again, we are adding things that are opposite. They're going to equal zero. Negative one plus one is equal to zero. Uh, 4,962 plus negative 4,962 is equal to zero. Okay, additive inverses, let's get this down. Additive inverses, Oop. Sorry. Additive inverses are opposites whose sum is zero. So all these on the left are examples of additive inverses. Inverse is another word for opposite and we're adding them together and they give us a sum of zero. Easy enough? All right. Um, we can use additive inverses to solve problems. Okay. Let's say we've got negative 11 plus 11 plus 6. And we don't really know how to do positives and negative yet, how to combine, but we can use what we know about additive inverses to solve problems. Because we're adding a negative 11 and a positive 11, they're going to cancel. They're going to become 0. And then 0 plus 6 is 6. So additive inverses can make it really easy to solve some problems. Here's negative 20 minus 4 plus 20. Okay, negative 20 and a positive 20, they are opposites. They are additive inverses. What do we have left? Well, we've got a negative 4 is all we have left. Okay, how about an ugly one? Let's do um, 1 plus negative 2 plus 3 plus negative 4 plus negative 3 plus 2 plus negative one. Okay, it looks like a mess, but it's really not that bad because this is full of opposites. Okay, there's a one, we've got a one right here, and a negative one right here, and they're being added together. So those are gonna cancel. Additive inverses have a sum of zero. Here we've got a negative two and a positive two. Those are gonna cancel. A 3 and a negative 3, those are going to cancel. 
And then what do we have left? Right there, a negative 4. Okay, so you can use additive inverses to simplify expressions as well. All right. Uh, let's talk about some real-world examples of, of opposite numbers. Okay. If I were to jog three miles east, what would be the opposite of that? <laughs> Not jogging, yeah. Okay, or jogging three miles west. East and west are opposite directions. So if you jogged, if you think about a number line, if you started here at zero, never eat shredded wheat. If you jogged three miles east, one, two, three, and then you jogged three miles west, you'd be right back where you started. Okay, so real world quantities, real world situations uh, that have a sum of zero. Okay, you could say um, if you ran four miles south the opposite of that would be ran four miles north easy okay how about um, let's say you went out and bought five cars that's right five cars because you're loaded okay the opposite of buying five cars would be selling five cars uh, let's say sold five cars okay real world opposites bought five cars sold five cars um, let's say made two cups of coffee uh, actually I don't like coffee let's say tea made two cups of tea drank two cups of tea. Those are opposites. We had two cups of tea, then we drank them. We don't have any tea anymore. Um, one with money. How about a, um, a deposit? If you put money into the bank, you are depositing money. A deposit of a hundred dollars. The opposite of deposit is withdrawal or withdrawal. Withdrawal of a hundred dollars. Okay, because we're using opposites, it's the same amount every time. We're just looking for words that mean the opposite of each other. All right, uh, that does it for our first lesson on integers. Make sure you have your notes. Come ready with your questions, and we'll see you tomorrow.